Hey everybody, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, my name is Kelly and for today's video I'm going to be doing my April reading wrap up. I read nine books in April and we had some hits and then we also had some misses but overall I think it was a pretty good reading month if I do say so myself. Now I talked about this in my May TBR jar picks my May reads video um that I didn't do one of those for April and that was because there were so many new releases that were coming out in April and I said to myself well if I do the TBR jar prompts video right and I pick all these other books realistically I'm probably not going to be reading them at all so I said to myself you know what I'm gonna make my own TBR so I picked out I think nine books and it was a mix of new releases and like books that I really wanted to get to on my TBR and I think there were nine books that I picked out and out of those nine books I read eight of those which I'm pretty proud of myself even though I didn't finish it but I did finish the last book today it doesn't count because it's May 1st but I still count that as a win so there's that I'm going to pull up my ratings so if you see me looking down I'm just looking at the ratings on my phone but yeah let's get into the nine books that I read in April so the first book that I read was Fear the Flames by Olivia Rose Darling. This is her first book, I'm pretty sure, like her debut book. And it is a fantasy romance book, Enemies to Lovers. And let me just say, the Enemies to Lovers was definitely enemying. Is that the right terminology? I don't know. But just their banter had me like giggling and just smiling the whole time. I loved both the female main character and the male main character so much. Also, the female main character reminds me a little bit of the female main character from Throne of Glass. Like just a little. I can see a little bit of her in her. So I really enjoy getting to see that. She's such a baddie and... I don't know I really love this book I don't want to say too much on this because I went into this book pretty blind and I really loved it I gave it a 4.25 stars now the reason it wasn't a five star is because there is a there's this thing they talk about that's going to happen in the book and when it finally happens I feel like it was so rushed and I was expecting more and then it was just over I was like that's what we've been preparing for this whole entire book so that is why I didn't give it a full five stars but I just I loved the side characters and the romance and just everything about this book was amazing I definitely recommend checking out this book and I'm really excited to read the second one I think it's coming out this year I'm not sure when but I think that's what I heard so I'm really excited to read more from her and she also her writing was really easy and the fantasy part wasn't too complicated so I definitely think like if you want to get into fantasy this could be a book to start with because it doesn't have too much world building so really loved it 4.25 stars the second book I read in April is Love Redesigned by Lauren Asher I was struggling on a rating for this book because I really really loved it but I was like, should I give it a 4.5 or a 4.75? I ended up giving it a 4.5 stars. I really loved the romance. This is childhood rivals to lovers and their family are also like really close. Like their mothers are like best friends. There's that. I loved Julian. Like the things that he would say to Dahlia just made my heart melt. And basically Dahlia ends up coming back to Lake Wisteria after a heartbreak and Julian and Dahlia end up like trying to like remodel this house together because she is an interior designer so they work on this house together and then it goes from there and the banter and I don't know I just loved this so so much and Lauren Asher can be a hit or a miss author from me but I really loved this book so four and a half stars for Love Redesigned. Alright, so the next book that I read was Practice Makes Perfect by Sarah Adams. Now, I read When in Rome, what did I read this year or last year? I can't remember, but I think it was a couple months ago. I don't think it was that long ago that I read When in Rome. And that book was alright. I think I gave it like a three or three and a half star rating. So I was kind of going into this thinking that I 
it was gonna be just like a little short romance I was gonna give like three stars but I ended up really enjoying this book so you are following Will and Annie and Annie is the main male character in the first book's sister and then Will is the female main character in the first book's bodyguard and Annie is having all these problems on dates she ends up going on a date with this guy and he ends up calling her like boring and she just she's having a lot of problems with dating so she ends up talking to Will and they end up going on these little dates where like he would like try and teach her you know how to go on dates how to make dates better and stuff like that and it goes from there and Will was such a perfect like guy I don't know he was just really sweet and I loved Annie as well Annie also owns a flower shop so I love just getting to see all of that and I don't know it was just a really cute read I think I gave this what did I give this a four star I think let me see yeah I gave this book a four star um but yeah I was really surprised I loved this book way more than the first book and yeah it was a really cute little rom-com would you classify it a rom-com i think i would so yeah four stars for that one and then i went into redeeming six this is a huge book this book is like almost 800 pages and after reading saving six i was like how much more pain can joey and Efa endure is that the correct wording wording is hard for me as you can tell but I was like, how much more pain can Chloe Walsh put these characters through? Apparently, not enough because there was so much pain in this book. I can't talk about it too much. This is the fourth book in the Boys of Tommen series. This is the second book that follows Joey and Aoife. This book broke my heart. Like, I feel like I was sobbing the majority of this book. And it's crazy because you see little snippets of Joey in Shannon's books were the first which were the first two books in the Boys of Thomas series but you really just seeing it from his point of view I don't think anything could have prepared me for this this book was so sad definitely check your trigger warnings before reading this series I don't know why when it was traditionally published you can find these books in the YA section it is not YA like, there are so many deep topics that are talked about in this book. I do not think you should be reading these this series unless you are 18 years or older because they are, they just deal with such serious topics and I don't think they are for everybody. Also, don't be intimidated by how thick these are. I feel like a lot of people put this series off because the books are so long. But let me tell you, Chloe's writing is so amazing and I feel like you fly through these books just carry some tissues because it's definitely a wild ride. I gave this book five stars because I love Joey and Aoife so much. I think, no I, I don't think, I know. Joey and Aoife are my favorite couple from the Boys of Thomas series and I don't think they will ever be topped. I just, I love them so much and I already want to reread their story because after reading Tammy 7, I just crickets we'll talk about taming seven in a second all right the next book i read in april was wild love by elsie silver now i was so excited to read this book because i fell in love with elsie silver's writing in her chestnut springs series which i read last year and i absolutely fell in love with that series and those characters so i was definitely really really excited for this book and i don't know what it was but this book just fell flat for me. I ended up giving this book a 3.75. I just didn't really feel the romance between the two characters. And I just don't know what other way to describe it is. I just felt like there was something missing. And I just can't pinpoint what it was. But I do love both of the characters separately. I just, I don't know. I just didn't feel their romance. So... This one was a little bit of a miss for me. I still really love her writing. Like her writing is so easy to get into and I feel like I fly through her books. And I'm really excited to read the next book. I think these are all Single Dad, the series, I'm pretty sure. And the main male character in this book is the second book in the Chestnut Springs series, Willa. This is her brother, Ford. And the things Ford said to Rosie just had me blushing. So I really just loved him as a character. And yeah, 
three and a half or not three and a half 3.75 it was still good it just i was just expecting more so hopefully i will like the second book in this series all right next on the new releases i read taming seven by chloe walsh this is the fifth book in the boys of tommen series how many times am i going to say the word series in this video we should have like a little series counter Anyways, I went into this book so, so, so excited. This is Claire and Gibsy's book. Now, you're probably wondering why do these covers look so different than the other ones. Well, these actually got picked up by a publisher. Those other ones were like the indie covers. And Claire and Gibsy's, this is like Claire and Gibsy's book. This one. Just one. We're not getting like the big bulky books that we got from like Joey and Shannon's books, which I'm really sad about because... I wanted so much more from Claire and Gibsy than what we got. I don't want to say too much because like I said this is the fifth book in the series and I don't want to spoil anything for any of you who have not read it yet. But I was expecting this book to be an Infinity Star read for me. I was even saying what if they top Joey and Eva for me. I love Gibsy from the first book Binding 13 getting to see him in there. I knew he was like going to be my favorite. I just was let down and I can't say too much because like I said spoilers but we were just focusing so much on the other characters in my opinion than the actual main characters of this book and I don't know I just gave it four stars because of what we got from the characters other than that I just was kind of disappointed by this book because I was just expecting so much more and I wish we were getting more from Claire and Gibsy because I feel like I did not get enough of their romance because I feel like it was put on the back burner in their own book which does not make sense to me. Also I am annoyed because this is going to look so weird on my shelves with the indie covers. So there's that. Also I was just looking and the spine even says young adult. I don't know why these books are being classified as young adult. Even this book, there are heavy topics in every single one of these books. So please check your trigger warnings. Like I said before, they're not for everybody. So please, please, please check your trigger warnings. I was just expecting so much more from Claire and Gipsy's story. And I'm just a little bit sad that we're not getting any more from them because they were definitely my most anticipated couple from this series. Now, the next couple, I don't know if I want to read their book and I don't know if I'm going to. I probably will, but right now I, I don't want to. So, four stars. I am really let down by this book. And I did tap it because I loved Claire and Gibsy's connection and just how... I don't know I just love them and I wanted more how many times am I gonna say that I don't know I'll probably say it a bunch more next I read defy the night by Bridget Kemmer I've had this book on my TBR for a while and I really 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 loves this book I listened to it on audible and I am so excited to continue this series I think it's a trilogy if I remember correctly I gave this book four stars. There were a couple of things that I feel like were missing in here and I also feel like there were some parts that were really rushed so there's that but I did really love both of the characters in this book and I'm excited to continue on. All right we're down to our final two reads of April. The next book is Funny Story by Emily Henry. I did a whole video on a little bit of a reading vlog for this book and five stars, infinity stars. I think this and Redeeming Six were my favorite reads of the month. I was so, so, so excited for this book and I feel like this book is getting a lot of backlash and I don't know why. I think especially the main male love interest in this book is getting a lot of hate because he's not like he's very different from any other of the male characters that I've ever read about and he also works in the service industry which I don't understand why that's like such a problem for people I loved Miles and I loved Daphne and I loved their story so you were following like I said Miles and Daphne and so Daphne is engaged to Peter 
and he ends up going on his bachelor party and his best friend Petra ends up saying that she has feelings for him so he comes back and he tells Daphne that he's getting back with his childhood best friend and that basically that he's leaving her and guess who is Petra's boyfriend at the moment yep Miles so they both break up with each other's they both break up with them and Daphne needs a place to live so she ends up moving in with Miles this book was very messy and I loved it I related a little too hard to Daphne and I just I don't want to keep talking about this because I did a whole video on my thoughts and stuff like that but I loved it and the spine is the most beautiful thing I've ever seen on the planet I definitely want to show off this book on my shelf and I cannot wait for Emily Henry to release more books because I cannot get enough of her writing and her banter the banter in this book was top tier just go read it. If I had to recommend one book for you to go read, it'd be a funny story. Alright, the last book that I read in April was Before I Let Go by Kennedy Ryan. So you are following Yasmin and Josiah and they end up getting a divorce. I don't want to say what happens because it's, I don't think it's on the back of the book. But they have two kids and you just see their story and like how they're dealing with certain things in their life and these characters felt so real to me I honestly feel like this was like a real story and it probably is but this book made me cry it was so emotional and Kennedy Ryan's writing is just so good I fell in love with both of the characters I want to read a quote if I can find it in here somewhere here we go and I think I'm most grateful for time, which doesn't always heal all wounds, but teaches us how to be happy again, even with our scars. Yeah, this book is so deep, and I love that about it. So, I just really, really enjoyed the story, and I'm going to be thinking about this book for a while, because it just deals with such emotional topics, and it definitely had my eyes sweating a lot. <laughs> So I gave this book 4.25 stars and I cannot wait to read more from Kennedy Ryan. Her writing was beautiful and I just loved the mental health representation in this book and the therapy representation as well. So I really really enjoyed this book and I think this book was a perfect way to end off my reading month. So yeah those are all the books that I read in April. Overall, we had two five stars. We had a lot of fours. We had one three-ish star rating, but we didn't have anything lower than a 3.75. So overall, I think that is a really great reading month, if I do say so myself. I'm about to drop all these books. There we go. Those are all the books I read. I did a lot of tabbing this month as well, because I just, I love annotating books. I feel like that just and captures the reading experience you get to let's underline like quotes that you love and like your favorite moments in a book and you can always like flip through them and like look back on them so that's the end of today's video please ignore the lighting i'm trying to figure out where i like to film my videos i'm trying to find like different spots because my lamp my like little light thing that i used to use over here the cord broke so i can't turn that on anymore so i'm trying to find like Maybe I'll start filming in front of my windows a little bit more so we have better lighting. But I'm sorry if the lighting looks iffy a lot in this video. But if you enjoyed this video, please give it a huge thumbs up. Leave me a comment down below letting me know what books you read in April and what were your favorite reads of the month. And I'll see you guys in my next video really soon. Bye guys.